Hey, why don't you uh, shine a light over there, Rula? Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. I'm your host, Casey Fatchett. If you've never listened to the show before, in addition to providing entertaining and informative photography-related information, wait, did I say information? Content. It's all about the content. Anyway, besides providing you with entertaining and informative photography-related content, I also go on adventures with the crew of the Starship Fibonacci. I like to call them my hashtag nerdy photo crew. Right now, Rula 3 RDS and I are exploring a tunnel system beneath an abandoned outpost. Just get a creepy feeling down here. What did you say the sign outside translated to? Lost things. Great. Not creepy at all. Well, it's still spooky season here on the podcast. And in this episode, I'm sharing your spooky, scary stories with my friend Jeremy Harris. And before you think that these are all ghost hunting stories, think again. These stories are not paranormal in nature. They're just people in frightening situations with the occasional unexplained elements. Of course, be sure to stick around for these creepy tales after the break. Well, I wouldn't open that Rula. Hey listeners, are you looking for a way to support the nerdy photographer or just show off your love for photography? Head over to nerdyphotographer.com and go to the merchandise section of our shop. That's right. There's merchandise, there's funny t-shirts, wall art with inspirational photography quotes, mugs for people who drink things, stickers, you take them and you stick them to other things. The kids love these, gonna be huge. So head over to nerdyphotographer.com, click on the shop and head to the merchandise section to get yours today. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. Wine, Dine, and Storytime. I'm Nydia. I'm Dana. I'm Cindy, and we're your hosts. Have you ruined a family gathering by asking what wine pairs well with eating a husband? Are you the CEO of TMI? Have you ever been kicked under the table because you brought up your favorite dinner topic, atrocities throughout history? Then this podcast is perfect for you. Each week, Dana and I share stories based on topics that include true crime, historical shenanigans, unexplained mysteries, and all things fascinating, while our amateur chef Cindy prepares themed dinners and pairs wines based on those topics find us the wine dine and Storytime podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a follow um i was setting my stuff up and i hear i'm like jesus is there a bird in the house like it sounded like yeah. there was like something in the house and i was like holy shit and it's just like then it's like three or four of them and like, like what the hell's going on and I look out the window and there's a, you know, flock of wild turkeys like walking down the street. But it <laughs> sounds like they're in the house with me just because the noise was coming up under the room and like filling the room. So and then I would have like I could hear people like park next to our house having conversations on the phone in their car. Uh -huh. um, so I went. And I, I, you know, put some insulation underneath because there was nothing. It was just like subfloor and that was it. <laughs> it also got pretty cold in the winter. Um, so I went through the process of uh, putting in, you know, some, some insulation that's helped quite a bit, both sound wise and heat wise. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts before COVID and it's interesting to see, like, there's a lot of them do it on YouTube, but you can kind of see that set up, you know? Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of equipment sometimes is required to have a good, clean sound. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, there's different things you can do. And, like, they have those little boxes. Like, you can just put your head in a box. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Which, you know, if I got back into doing voice acting, I'd probably do. Because um, I used to do voiceovers. Um, oh. And, uh, yeah, and... So I, I would do the, like, you know, you'd, you'd be in like a little tiny booth, but they have, those, I have friends who have, like, it's just basically a box for their microphone. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of like ambient noise, but honestly, like listening to this, like I, I have like a little soundproof thing, like a soundproofing thing that I put my mic in and the difference between this microphone and that is really negligible. Um, yeah. so I don't know. I don't know yeah. if there's a big difference. Well, well, real quick before we get started, how are things otherwise? Keeping busy? 
Uh, I'm getting busy again. I mean, I'm just like yep. wed- weddings are happening again. I got a couple of weddings coming up and then uh, all of a sudden all these people like contacting me for shit. Like, Hey, you know, can you do the Like, <laughs> like yeah. ask me about weekend availability in, in like late September, October. I'm like, I have none. Um, because like everybody who moved their weddings from last year, moved it to September, October of this year. So it's you know, like, and everything else is going to get booked up in general. Um, so I've got like some, yeah. some availability here or there. I'm like, can we do this on like, it's for other stuff too. It's like, you know, Oh, I want to do like business headshots. I'm like, we can do that on a weekday. Like, come on, yeah. can we, can't we do this like on a weekday, please? <laughs> well, happen. yeah, usually you do those. Those are weekday jobs. Yeah. Wow. Like weekday. I can do this. I can do this, you know, on a, you know, a Monday or a Wednesday or something. I don't have to do this on a Saturday. Yeah. No, no, definitely. I, I hardly ever work on weekends just because I do all that business stuff. So yeah, how's that? I don't do weddings anymore. Yeah, how are things it's going? It's good. Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple pretty good uh, corporate event jobs this week, this, this year. Some uh, like a video, you know, corporate video thing, and um, you know, I've got a few things lined up. I'm working on some music video stuff and a record promo for a guy and. I've got a I've got a guy in a metal band who wants me to shoot his video, but like he's he's becoming a little hard to get in touch with because I called him on Sunday because he's got all these questions and I, I called him at like noon on Sunday and he sounded like he had just woken up and he was really hungover. Mm. And I was like, well, like dude, just call me when you're ready, you know. But you know, other than that, I'm just you know, uh, I'm just uh, a lot of things here and there. I'm just trying to keep the money from Fine, yeah. bleeding out of my bank account. Trying to find the stuff. That's I mean that's uh, I mean. I've got a, looks like the VA hired me for a job last year. It was mostly video stuff. And then they came back. Apparently they got another grant and they want to do some more stuff. So they said they wanted to, but that was Mm -hmm. what kept me afloat last year. Yeah. Um, So looks like I'm going to do another gig for them. Um, But yeah, apart from work, it's just like, I'm still like my, it's the one year anniversary of my parents dying. Uh, Oh, yeah. And yeah. That's been an emotional process. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 can imagine, I can imagine. My father just came to visit for my birthday last weekend, and I'm like, I haven't seen him in two years. Since my 50th birthday in Hawaii, I haven't seen him in two years. And I'm like, he, he, he annoys the crap out of me sometimes, but I'm like, I want to try and spend every minute I can with him because I just yeah. know it's not for, you know, like people don't last forever. Yeah, that was the thing, like, even before my parents died, like, I, I, you know, especially with my dad, because he'd been sick for a decade or more, um, like, every time I was on the phone with him, I was just like, you know, there was the realization this could be the last time we talk. So it was like, that was was always very at the front of my mind in those conversations. But, you know, it's just, there's just been, like, stupid family shit, you know, I'm the only one doing anything so that that's just kind of annoying but yeah whatever well every day above ground is a, is a good day yep that's, <laughs> i try to tell myself yeah even if you don't do anything like today's been pretty lazy i'm like shit what am i gonna do today it's like i i, I can watch some youtube videos on a new camera that i really want and i can watch the walking dead uh and i could um, just wait for casey to call <laughs> And that's pretty much what my days well, I got. I had to take the card a bit to get fixed, so I'm gonna go pick it up in a bit. Well, my <laughs> friend of mine got went to WPPI. I tell you, like, yeah. he, he won. Like he, he did like a little hands-on like thing with the uh, Fuji, like the medium for the new medium format camera. Like got to play yeah. around, play around with it for like 15 minutes, and yeah. entered in, and he won it. Oh no! Wait, wait. Jesus, yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah, he's just like sent me his like unboxing video. Like, hey, he's like, wow. He's like, like, you know, you always wonder what happens when you throw your name in the hat at one of those things. Like, yeah, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy who like him and his wife are wedding photographers in like the Midwest somewhere because he really likes to explore insane asylums and he's really uh, big on like the preservation of these buildings. And all of a sudden they started, I've seen all these pictures of him that would look very lit. And he's like, oh yeah, my wife, like, um, won a contest where she won all this pro photo stuff. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, damn, like, yeah, like all these heads and like, yeah. like, I'm like, she just won it. But you didn't pay for any of it. It was like thousands of dollars. Of them that she just well, wanted. She's not even a prof- like a real professional photographer. She's just like, I'm like a, 
like a, a weekend wedding photographer, kind of like, you know, every once in a while. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. It's like any, any yeah. pro photo head is going to be thousands of dollars. It's not like mm-hmm. just one, uh, yeah. Yeah, several is going to be, uh, yeah. I know. As I told him, I was like, dude, I'm psyched to you guys. That's great. I'm really happy for you guys. Yeah. Use them because like, if you, if you don't, then I'll be mad. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's somebody who's actually going to get something out of this, it's not like, you know, the one the thing that bumps me out is like when you see like the people who do like, who already get gear for free. Yeah. Like winning some sort of like, Oh, I got, you know, Oh, I'm just upgrading my kit now. Oh, I'll figure out what I'm going to sell yeah. off. My stuff. I'm like, Oh, come on, man. Like, yeah. You're choosing from your like 20 different, you know, you're like just yeah whatever uh, never i'll move on from that <laughs> <laughs> so you're, are you recording all this yes well oh, okay. i've got to cut That's it fine. out i'm gonna cut it. I, just, I just turned on the <laughs> yeah i'll cut it whenever we start actually talking all right well looks like i've got half a battery life i'm, I'm good okay so we should probably get started ah. hello and welcome to the nerdy photographer podcast it's spooky season for October. Uh, and I'm welcoming back to the podcast, uh, my friend, Jeremy Harris, Jeremy, welcome. Hey, welcome. Welcome to you too. <laughs> welcome. Thank to you. The... Thanks. Thank, thanks for having me back. <laughs> oh, always, man. Um, I was thinking about like for this like sort of Halloween thing to, to explore some scary stories from photographers. And I'm not just talking about like, Usually it was interesting to see when I put this, the call out onto the interwebs uh, for scary stories from photographers, a lot of people immediately thought that I meant ghost stories, but I don't necessarily mean ghost stories. I mean, just like scary things that have happened, like people like just that are genuinely frightening. Um, And immediately after reading several of these, I thought of you because they're right up your alley. Um, But, you know, I just want to get reactions to these stories. So you want to dive in? You ready? Sure. So these aren't, these are actually like, these like supernatural actual, stories or stories of people's gear going down in the middle of the shoot. Oh, it's Hey like man, the biggest, it's just all that's kinds the biggest of stuff. fear for me. Yeah. It's all, it's all kinds <laughs> all right. of things. There's a, there's a wide variety here. All right. Well, let's, let's do it. All right. So here's the first one. When I was an undergrad, I lived downtown in an apartment in the city. I went to school in, there was this very cool, distinctive bridge about five minutes walk from my house. It was shaped like a snake and overlooked a really busy road, so there's lots of potential for cool photos there. One night, I decided to roll through and take some pictures. I grabbed my gear, snapped a few pics, then I got bored and left as the shots I had envisioned weren't really working out, and to be honest, it was just felt kind of weird that night. I didn't really think anything about it until the next day when I was scrolling through the Facebook page of our local photography community, and I saw someone post an article about the bridge. It turned out, that the previous night when I had been out there, a couple had been mugged on the bridge and one of them was shot and killed. The article mentioned the specific time at which the crime occurred. And I went back and checked the timestamp on my photos. And it turns out that the timestamp on the last photo I took was about five minutes before the, the reported time of the crime occurring. I'm not sure how much I actually missed it by, but to this day, I still occasionally think about what might've happened. had I stayed for just a few minutes longer. Yeah, that's uh, that. That happens all the time. Yeah, you're in the you're in you're in the wrong place at the right time, or you're near the wrong place at the right time, and you just happen to get out of it. Yeah, I mean, like, and we like I followed up on that question. And I like, what do you, like, what did you think was like? You know, you, when you think about what might have happened if you had stayed longer, like that you would have like gotten pictures of it, or like, or it could have been you. Like, and he was well, like, <laughs> that depends. Are you are. Are you, are, do you want to be Ouija and you, you're, you you want a crime photography career Yeah. and you just happen to stumble upon a fresh crime scene? I mean, that was something that I always kind of fantasized about when I was in my younger years, but I wanted to be a crime scene photographer and I was like, Oh, I want to get there first. But I, you know, I don't know. It, 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 I, I wouldn't want to do that now. Oh, did you see the movie, the little things with Jared, no, Jared Leto and, uh, uh, Denzel and I can't remember who the third lead in is. Uh, oh, oh, it's Rami Malek. Rami Malek. Um, I did see that one. I think yeah, I did see that one. You know, the, the joke I'm talking about when Jared Leto makes a Ouija joke that I thought was really good considering that, you know, like they're, cause they're like showing him some like 
crime scene footage, he's like, mm, it's no Ouija. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I, there, if something like that happened to me, I think I would be more concerned. Like, my initial concern might be more like, oh, I'm glad I didn't get shot. Um, <laughs> as opposed to, oh, I missed a, missed a really great picture opportunity. And what are your well, thoughts? you know, as 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 image makers, we're always put into situations where do we want to do we if we if we get put into a, a situation of of conflict or if, if someone is is uh, needing some help, you know, do we document it or do we actually put them on the camera and, and help that person? And I think every situation is different, and every person would react differently. And also, the people who you know, it also comes down to: would you want to sit there and take pictures? and deal with the reaction later of you being kind of an insensitive jerk, or would you want to feel better about yourself by saying, you know what, I actually helped this person out and got them to the hospital and right. whatever. So, yeah. And I think that the, I mean, I think the one thing that we 2020 hindsight, but I mean, it's like, what exactly are you even witnessing at that point? Like what, what the, you yeah. come back to it, like saying, Oh, someone was mugged. They were shot and killed. You're sort of like sitting there, like analyzing it from like this very cold perspective of, you know, like you're not actually there and trying to think like, oh, well, you know, I would do this or this. And like, I, you know, would I be concerned for my own safety or whatever? But it's like, yeah, when you're in those situations, like I've been in those situations without my camera and like where something happened and I'm like, yeah, you don't stop and think about that sort of stuff. It all just happens really fast. Yeah. No lucky for this person they weren't they weren't there yeah all right next one and this person starts with a disclaimer and their Uh disclaimer is i'm quite a skeptic and cynic about all things paranormal oh me too this is a good one i do believe there are lots of things that we can't explain but rarely if ever ascribe any of these things to any kind of spirit world interacting with us however I was at the Sloss Furnace in Birmingham. This is in England. Oh, yeah. Is, oh, no, Birmingham, Alabama. Is it? I thought, I thought it was Birmingham. Yeah, Bur- no, it's Birmingham, Alabama. All right, I've been you, there. You've been there? All right. So you'll actually know yeah. what this person is talking about. Uh, yeah. Sloss Furnace in Birmingham is famous for how haunted it is, which is uh, be- supposedly due to the men who had died there during in horrible working conditions. Oh, yeah. For many years, I worked just six blocks away from Sloss. During my lunch hour, I would often drive by it or even drive onto the main parking lot, a big grassy area with the workers' quarters and some shotgun houses. This was before the days where the park was more locked down than it is now. The more time I spent around it, the more I got interested in photography. I decided I wanted to spend several hours taking photos there. So one Saturday, I grabbed my camera and I headed out. I go in. Again, there are no fences keeping people out at this point in time. And I'm walking wow. around outside. And as far as I can tell, there's no one else around. I think there was maybe one other car in the area where I parked, but I didn't see anyone else the entire time I was there. <coughs> Side note, I'm not claustrophobic and I'm not afraid of the dark. Something unknown is more likely to make me want to investigate it than it is to avoid it. So I went on this journey with confidence and without fear. As I explored the area, I found the subterranean alleys about eight steps down into the tunnels. These are a series of long, low ceiling rooms, and from what I can remember, they were interconnected by doors in the walls. I could pass across the tunnels by walking through these doors, which were located in the center of the length of the tunnel. I walk into the first tunnel, which is pretty dark, but was still brimming, bringing in light from the entrance. I walked down to the door in the center and passed into the next tunnel. At that point is when I started to get creeped out from darkness <laughs> and silence. I walked into the third yeah. tunnel and suddenly I'm petrified. It dawned on me that I had not told anyone where I was going. <laughs> yeah. And if someone showed up at the entrance, I would have no way to go except deeper into the tunnels. I turned around to go back the way I came, but when I did, I swear I saw a shadow move past the first center door. Was it an illusion, a bird or an animal flying past or moving past the entrance and casting a shadow? My own like fearful hallucinations at that point. And then I feel a chill sweep through me to the point that I actually physically 
whole body shiver. And I didn't feel like I was alone anymore. My logical brain tells me that this was a physical response to the adrenaline that had just started pumping through me, but it felt like rapid external temperature change. All I knew was that I had to get out of there. I walked towards the entrance of the third tunnel, and I was hoping I would not wind up lost at wherever it dumped me. My heart was racing in my throat and feeling like someone or something was right on my heels. I felt like I was going to scream, but I held it in as I reached the entrance. Coming out of the tunnel into the light felt like what I imagined it would be when you're drowning and suddenly break the surface of the water and take in a breath of air. I ran, and I do mean ran, back to my car. Trembling with fear and adrenaline, it took me several moments to regain my composure and feel safe to drive away. I did go back to Sloss one more time, again to take photos with a friend. I stood at the top of the tunnels, deciding whether or not having a friend with me would bolster my courage to go back in, but no, it was not enough to venture back into those tunnels. I never want to experience that kind of fear again. The tunnels can stay undisturbed as far as I'm concerned. Wow. Well, that's a great story. Yeah. What yeah. First off, I'm totally jet. I'm totally jealous because, like, I, you know, as a kid, I used to spend the summers with my grandparents in Birmingham, and my father, my grandfather, had worked at the sloth uh, furnaces on occasion. He was an engineer. He used to tell me all about working there. Um, as I got older and I started exploring abandoned buildings, that was always on my radar. But you know, I never had a chance to get to see it until. I don't know, three or four years ago when we finally drove through Birmingham and now it's a, a park, you know, they have concerts there and stuff and it's, they tore down most of it and it's just, you know, a few smokestacks and um, it's, it's kind of benign. So it's not nearly as scary, but that, that being said, this person having access to the whole thing with no security, like, oh man, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like to me, like, well, first of all, like you, you don't come across things like that anymore for the most part, <laughs> no. I don't know how long ago this was, but like, like where there's everything seems to get pretty locked up pretty quickly, mostly because of liability oh. issues, my guess, but like, you know, oh, yeah. at least these I, days. I was probably 10, 15, 10, 12 years ago, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it's, you know, first thing is you don't go exploring places like that by yourself because, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. You can fall into a hole. I've, I've, I've been in situations where I was with someone and I almost fell into a very deep, deep hole in some tunnels. Luckily, I caught myself. But had I been alone and fallen into that tunnel? Yeah. So number one rule, when you go exploring places like that, take one with you. Yes. Um, we'll get into that more in later stories. <laughs> yeah. A few okay. more that are, that have a, there's, there's a little bit of a, you know, given your uh, explorative uh, past and, you know, and, you still do uh, if we get a chance to do, well, our last Halloween's episode was our discussion about like, you know, going through uh, you going through uh, uh, or was it last Halloween? Same time. Yeah. And uh, you still, have you had a chance to go shoot anything recently or? No, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of living the life of safe, safety and security here in, <laughs> in Nashville. It's like, I, as a, as a, as a, a man in a relationship, um, you know, with other things that to focus on, I, I, you know, and you know, it's, it's not so much that it's just, there's not much to see. And I just don't have the time to, to drive around to the middle of nowhere um, and, and explore these places. I mean, there's, there's a kid here and we won't get into it too much, but there's a kid here, um, abandoned Nashville on Instagram. Check it out. He's, he's actually gotten way better. And he's he's living the life, man. He's got he's got a drone so he can fly it around the buildings that he's gonna explore to check for security and then he can avoid security by using the drone and like he finds some amazing places. But I did that I, I did it. And, you know, I have been there, done that. And, and not to say that I wouldn't do it, but yeah, it's not really my main focus anymore. Cool, man. I mean I love your photos from like all the, the abandoned buildings, but there's oh, yeah. there's there's more stuff coming up later in these stories that I, that we'll we'll touch on that. Again. Well, as far as this person's experience with a, um, a, a, a potential ghost, you know, I mean, I'm skeptical as well. Uh, I, I've never experienced anything like that. I, I, I can't say that they are wrong. But, you know, they experience with that and, you know, you got you to gotta respect that. But was it, you know, what was it? Who the hell knows? Could it have been a draft from the tunnel? You Absolutely. know, I felt lots of full draft. You know, I mean, there's a lot of 
a lot of natural explanations that could happen, especially when your adrenaline's pumping and you're you're scared. Yes, and that's exactly like when they when this person said like, you know, the, and I've been in places where I absolutely know that my mind was playing tricks on me, um, mm-hmm. and not like the, the, I think that like it's very telling when this person says like, you know, oh, you know, was it probably my adrenaline like causing me to feel like you know feel this way? Totally possible. In the moment, you don't know, you're not necessarily thinking that though. Um, oh yeah, and you can see how people might confuse that with something. But also, I mean, it it can. I, I would never like. I am not as brave as you were in your youth as or uh, younger days. As far as like, going into <laughs> my younger places, days, younger yeah. days, going into places like this, like I have been in some. But there's also there's also a healthy fear. Like my dad was a fire investigator. And just like buildings can rot or like damage, mm-hmm. whatever. just the, the fear of going through a floor or like falling oh, yeah. into a hole. Like that was, that was just very much at the top of my mind. I mean, like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Like I'm not, I've been to some buildings where, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I probably could get some cool pictures, but I don't know that that, 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 that roof above me is going to stay up. If I start, uh, you know, messing with anything to try to get like climb over, things and you know like those those sorts of that getting trapped even even if there are people who know that i'm there <laughs> and are with me uh-huh. like there's 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 some things that yeah, i am not going to risk oh yeah I, I did some crazy 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 stupid things that scared the shit out of me Oops. sorry no, that's fine but um yeah <laughs> it's like and i look back on those those situations and i'm like what was i thinking the only reason why i did them because i was with a friend who i was like all right can't chicken out with him i can't say no so you gotta Peer do pressure. it. Peer pressure. Peer pressure, yeah. All right. Next one. Next story. I went to this church in the middle of nowhere to shoot the Milky Way. I got there before sunset to scout it out, and I noticed there's a graveyard next to the church. Why, why are you surprised there's a graveyard next to the church? Is my initial thought. <laughs> it's a church. Yeah. Uh, Surprise. Yay. There's a graveyard. That's there's a circus tent next to the church. <laughs> <laughs> that I would be more surprised about. Uh, there was a parking area, so I parked, waited for the stars to come out. While eating my dinner and waiting, I started I started getting chills and goosebumps goosebumps on my arm. No big deal. It's just dark and cold. Not like I'm afraid of the dark or anything. When it's finally time that I'm going to start to shoot, I get out of my car, set everything up, and I hear a little girl giggle. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. I, I stop. <laughs> I look around. Mind you, I've been here for hours. I'm in the middle of nowhere. No cars have gone by in the past several hours that I've been there. There are no houses, just empty farmland as far as you can see. That's when I started to get freaked out. And despite it being a warm summer evening, I feel cold. I duck back in the car. Then I think I'm going to tough it out. It's fine. I'll go out again. I get a few shots in and I hear the little girls giggle again. No mistake this time. (laughs) And it was coming. It's a girl giggling and it's coming from the direction of the graveyard. I decide I'm getting the hell out of there. And I did. (laughs) I grabbed my gear, threw it in the car and took off. uh, Yeah, well, that's a, that's a really good story too. I mean, it, this is the kind of things that like I've always wanted to have happen. Like I've always wanted, you know, I grew up loving ghost stories, and it's like I always wanted to see a ghost. I always wanted to have something like this happen, and it, it never has. So, it's, I mean, it's kind of a bummer, but I'm jealous. I'm jealous of this person's experience because, like, had I heard that giggling, maybe I would have ran away. But I think I would have gone to invest. You know? I don't know. I've. So, had- I I will share a personal story of mine. Um, I lived in a house when I was in college that was uh, built uh, pre Civil War, and at one time, like people like speculated as to whether or not it was a spot on the Underground Railroad, um, because there was like there were like hidden rooms in the basement, um. And there was, it was just very like, 
I had been living, I had lived there for a year and um, some of the people who like everyone who lived in the basement, there were rooms that had been set up in the basement. Everyone who lived in the basement had horrible nightmares. Yeah. Like, yeah. Horrible, well, horrible. They're living in a, ba- like they're living in a basement. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of I mean, but it was like, you know, like these were, <laughs> this was beyond the pale of like, and, and they only happened after there was a party in the house. Like for, they would happen for like a week after like there was a party in the house. Um, not just yeah. like that night, but like, and, um, I went there to work on my room one time and like after like it was summer break or whatever. And I go to the house and I'm like going, and I'm like giving my room a, a fresh coat of paint and you know, doing some work. But you know, I'm in the house and I'm just like, man, this is just a mess. Like people just left and it was a mess and I was trying to clean up. And there were these huge area rugs that had just been like piled on top of stuff. I couldn't get to the vacuum cleaner because it was like kind of under these rugs. They just like thrown them down. Like they've been, I don't know why they were there. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put these down in the basement. Whatever. Not a big deal. So I grabbed one of them. and I'm just going to kind of push it down the stairs because I couldn't like carry the whole thing by myself. It was a big area rug. Um, yeah. and I get it that like most of the way down the stairs and then it gets caught up and I'm like, I'm going to just go, like, all right, I'll just go down to the bottom, like walk over it and drag it down from there. And I felt the most overwhelming terror that I, it was just like, and it was like, nothing had precipitated this. There's like nothing like weird going on. Like I, you know, just like. All of a sudden, it, I just like immediately my brain just kept feeling, like, get out of the house, get out of the house, get out of the house, get out of the house. And like in like you leave, like get out. Um, so <laughs> I am like, OK, so you, so you know that you know what that feels like. Yeah. And it was just I mean, it was just an immediate. I don't like I don't like there was. There was no, you know, well, weird things. And I was just like, it, well, it was like powerful. But here's the weird part of the story, because it does get weirder. And, you know, maybe I'll tell you other stories that happened after that. But, like, I'm running up the stairs to get my stuff. I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go. And I run up the stairs, grab my stuff out of my room. And there's only one other room in the house that is unlocked. And the phone starts ringing in it. And it's right at the top of the stairs. And I'm like, what do I do here? And, for, like, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to answer the phone. Like, this seems weird. There's only like that. This phone is still connected and you know, this door is open and whatever. So I like step in, I answer the phone and the voice on the other end goes, who is this? And I'm like, uh, well, who's this? I'm like, this is Casey. Like, you know, I'm, I'm he's like, Oh, you know, Casey, like it's Mike. And Mike was a friend of mine who lived in the house as well. And he, go, and he lived in the basement. Yeah. He's like, I just had this really weird feeling that someone had broken into the house. And he's like, and I thought to call this number. (laughs) And I was like, well, Well, and, uh, and I just said, well, I'm the only one here. And as far as I know, nobody, he's like, Oh, he's like, did you try to go in the basement? And I was like, yeah. He's like, man, I don't know if I do that. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't go down there if I were you. Yeah. Don't uh, go down in the basement. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, well, I'll tell you other stories another time, but like I, I have, I have felt that feeling of, of terror and just like weirdness. And like, I'm, I'm usually pretty skeptical too. I've been on ghost hunts. Like, and like more people are like, Oh, it's an orb. I'm like, that's dust. I'm so that's dust. That is not like, an <laughs> that's, or- that's not an orb. Like an orb. <laughs> I know, but orbs, like orbs aren't particularly scary. Like, yeah. all right. Well, if you saw like, if you like some giggling girl, some giggling girls off in the distance, I, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I wouldn't be particularly scared of that noise. Like if I heard somebody, if I heard somebody in the bushes going, come here, little boy. Yeah, and I, of the, course, then I'd be really scared. But like some giggling girls, I'd be like, what is that? I'd be really curious to what's God. I mean, I'd take my flashlight or I'd just sneak over there and be like, what is that? You what's know? going on? Hmm, what's I mean, on? What's maybe I wouldn't. Here? I mean, if I, was, if I was by myself, maybe I wouldn't, but. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's like, I, yeah, and I think that there's, uh, I mean, there's a real difference between like that. That was for me was uh, that particular experience was really frightening, just because like 
I was like, whatever, I'm just going to throw this in the basement. And then all of like sudden it was like immediate, like full body, just like terror feeling like out of nowhere. Uh, wow. Yeah. And that note. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I'm curious. So this, this girl just left the, or I'm assuming it was a, was it a woman, right? Or a girl that like, was at the, I, just, I don't know if it uh, was a man or woman. Just like just said, um, they 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 split. They never figured out what it was. I hope they got some shots out of it. Uh, yeah, I'll send you. I mean, they, they, the Milky Way. I mean, it must, must have been you know, see the Milky Way. Pretty amazing. Would love to see that. I'm gonna message you. They, they must have been out in the middle of like uh, you know Midwest somewhere. I don't know. Where, where can you see the Where can you see the Milky Way? I just, and then in the United States, where can you like you know? I just messaged Montana. you. It's actually a pretty awesome picture. Uh, they, they had sent me a, I just messaged it to you uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can see like without even clicking through like the, the uh, picture. It's a pretty good picture. Um, but yeah, I mean, my guess is somewhere out in the Midwest or, you know, yeah. where there's not a lot of light pollution. Cause well, I don't know. Maybe there is. Uh, looks like there's maybe some off in the distance. But it's a pretty good, pretty good shot. All right, well, I'll check that one out. I'll check that one out. Welcome to Pineapple Pizza Podcast, where we serve up delicious slices of mythology, cryptozoology, and urban legends. I'm Ashley. To anyone who doesn't know me that well, the fact that I'm laughing right now probably horrifies you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Emily. What are the chances? I don't know. Uh, Like, bum, bum, bum. (laughs) 50-50? And I'm Lindsay. I banish you to the shadow of death. I corrupt you to the netherworld from which no one has come. Pineapple Pizza Podcast. Stop on by for a slice, a story, and a laugh. Coming January 2021. So uh, what's what's up with the next story? All right, next story. This is somebody who's more about, like, you know, this is uh, coming back to our, like, what's really happening here. Next story. Back when I worked for a county sheriff, I had the pleasure of working in the jail a few times, and I got to know the jail commander. She was a quote unquote, true believer. One of the things she said was that the jail was haunted. Among other things she mentioned as proof was a particularly scary, mentally ill inmate. Like think Charles Manson type who had stayed there for a year, had developed a bit of a cult among the inmates before hanging himself. Ooh. Yes. In the jail. Yeah. They they found him hanged just after midnight. Apparently the camera system hadn't been working that night. Anyway, fast forward a couple of years, the camera system has this weird tendency to shake violently and glitch out every night, just before midnight, and then recover a few minutes later. According to the jail commander, the inmates also wake up and freak out at the same time. This only happens in the wing of the jail where the guy hung himself. The the camera system... It's already pretty old by the time I started working there. I get called in to take a look at the system because I'm IT and obviously I can fix anything that has electrons moving through it. The jail commander starts by telling, uh, telling me about, about the ghosts and how they mess with the cameras and shows me footage. The first tape she shows me shows inmates standing around, sitting, doing typical inmate stuff as the light level changes for lights out in a jail, they never really actually go dark, but even though it's called lights out, sure enough, yeah. y- you can see ghost outlines <clears throat> walking around while others are lying in their mattresses. Any thoughts before uh, go into this, what happens next? Wait, wait a minute. What, you, what was the last thing you just said? I said, do you have any thoughts before I go on to what happens next? Oh, <laughs> I thought you said something about sex. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Ghost, <laughs> what's no, happening they, next okay um no no i um i like all i can think of is okay this is interesting go on yes yeah, so if you're familiar with the disneyland cctv ghosts you know what the punchline is vhs tapes of closed circuit television get weird artifacts like this 
when you record over them again and again and again. You can pull, yeah. pull up YouTube videos of from Disneyland and you know, you can see this effect happening over again. So I showed those to the jail commander and recommended they cycle out their old tapes for new ones because they're what they're getting is artifacts of inmates walking around on top of when the inmates are asleep because they've recorded over these tapes so many times. Exactly. But why do the cameras shake and go off every night at the same time, just before midnight for the hell of it? I pull a late night and hang out with the guards in the control room, watching the cameras. <laughs> yeah. The guards are all ex patrol deputies who have seen everything and generally don't give a shit about the stories, but they do recognize that the inmates wake up and freak out. They attribute it to methamphetamine withdrawal and psychosis and other issues. Why it happens always at the same time. They don't know. Sure enough at midnight, the cameras in the haunted wing all start shaking and fuzzing out. The inmates wake up and start crying and screaming and talking to themselves. And then a few minutes later, everything stops and goes back to normal. I'm really puzzled. I go to one of the tapes and turn on the audio. At mi midnight, I hear a bunch of screeching and thumping. And then I think, it sounds like, you know, the AC going out on my old Buick. Yeah. The next day, I talk to the facilities management people, and they're like, oh, yeah, every night we have to cycle the air handlers and the uh, air conditioning system, and we have a unit that's got a bad clutch and fan and it makes a really loud racket, but the county doesn't want to pay to replace it because the units aren't made anymore and we'd have to pay for new ones and we don't have that in the budget. So what happens is the air conditioning units, whatever or air handling units on the roof go crazy in that section every night at the same time. And it causes yeah. everything to go whack. Case closed. So that guy, that guy was a ghostbuster. He was yeah. not only an IT guy, but he was a ghostbuster. He was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm a skeptic and this doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to go in here and bust this yeah. bust it wide open. No human being would stack books like this. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just so funny how people stick to like the scary story. They're like, Oh, okay. They, they choose, they choose the, 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 the possibility of the most ridiculous as opposed to the most natural. They're like, Oh, there's ghosts in there. Okay. We're just going to live with that. Right. As opposed to let's try and figure this out. And, uh, you know, explain it. They're like, nope. They, they just, they just, can, can, their brains just say, oh yeah, go. Okay. We're, that's cool. We're going to live with it. The place is haunted. Right. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, you have to be skeptical about, you know, what's going on. Like even, you know, like there's, uh, the history of, uh, um, spirit photography. Yeah. I don't know if you have, oh yeah. Like, and it's a lot of cases, very simply, Obviously, uh, you know, double exposures, which were very popular in back, even in the 1800s, you know, people like just using oh, yeah. the same plates over and over again to like create spirit photography that, Oh, there's a ghost. Um, or, you know, long exposures where you'd have like little ghostly figures walking through. Well, yeah, I mean, I can do that right now if I want to and like go out yeah. and like, yeah, I'm going to take a long exposure. I, I've got pictures. Like I, I did a series of photos in, um, Grand Central, and you know, if I probably if I showed them to somebody from the 1800s, they think that it was just full of ghosts because all it just is like these <laughs> ghostly yeah. figures like walking through in these long exposures. Yeah, I mean, there's there are quite often explanations for things if you look into it. You know, that's when we find the unexplained. All right, next story. Sure. Again, an abandoned building. I was out photographing an abandoned cottage in the middle of nowhere. And as I'm walking through the house, I find <laughs> it's always in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I find two brand new parentheses and probably stolen motorcycles. Wow. Okay. Sitting in the living room. I decided, in the living room. Yeah. I decided to get the hell out of there pretty quick. Because I didn't want whoever owned them or whoever had taken possession of them coming back and finding me there. 
scary. That, yeah, that's right. Because you're like, uh, who's here? You've gone out in the middle of nowhere to like take pictures and you're like, uh, maybe I'm not alone. And maybe the people that are also here might not be law abiding citizens. Yeah. You know, in a case like that, you got to sort of like, you know, Oh, look, there's motorcycles in the living room. Yeah, that's, uh, that's odd. But but like, um, are they, bur- are they brand new motorcycles or are they old motorcycles and they're, are they covered with dust? No, he said they were yeah. two very obviously brand new motorcycles. Oh, okay. Yeah. In that case, sometimes it's better just to like not hang around. Right. <laughs> Because uh, there's lots of uh, nefarious individuals sometimes who use abandoned houses down the middle of nowhere for their shenanigans. Yeah. Oh, next one. This is a short one. Bridal party on cocaine. Total nightmare. (laughs) Bridal party on cocaine. Well, (laughs) yeah. I mean, what would be (laughs) not getting into like drugs too much, but what would be worse? Bridal party on cocaine, bridal party on mushrooms, bridal party on acid, bridal party on... on mm, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it all depends on what kind of trip they're having. But, like, I've dealt with lots of bridal parties that are like hammered on alcohol. Yeah. Um, on cocaine. Yeah, you know, I'm sure I've dealt with bridal parties who are on, you know, on, on cocaine as well, but I've never personally witnessed that. You know, the bride who's like, you know, cutting a line on the table and saying, Hey, get a picture of me with this. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I had, I had a dude who was like, um, you know, uh, it was a, a record industry exec. When I showed up was, uh, partaking of illicit, uh, materials. While, yeah. and, I was, and I was like, should I not be taking pictures right now? And he's like, eh, it's no big deal. And I was like, right. <laughs> no big deal. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Really? Yeah, well, who's going to see him? <laughs> Just me. Just don't put him on Instagram. Right. Uh, all right, next one. Had a shoot in an abandoned hospital, haunted abandoned hospital. The scariest yeah. part was the legal trouble I had afterwards. Oh, yeah. That's happened to me. Yeah, when you... In the Never, that's, that's the... That's that's the scary. That's the scariest thing. Whenever I'm, I've been exploring these places, is like getting caught by like you know police. And that that happened once. Yeah, I get. Uh, and it cost me cost me five cost me five hundred bucks. Yeah, not good. All right, next story. Basically, I was shooting on a dried sea inlet. Bang! Right in the middle. Ground used to be wet, but now was totally grassy and dry. As I'm shooting, I turn around and the water has started creeping up behind me, separating me from the shore. Ooh, that's pretty scary. I somehow managed to pinpoint the only place where there was a little bit of sand and started to run as fast as I could. I had to jump over the, a gap in the water and managed to climb to the shore over the rocks. Now, I didn't know how much the water was going to rise, but I thought, I'm probably safe here. Only issue. Behind me is a tall metal fence separating from a railway track. Uh, the passage under a bridge, uh, the, the, under the bridge I came from, was now completely flooded, and I could absolutely not go back that way. This happened in the course of 15 minutes between totally yeah. dry and apparently safe and completely flooded. I eventually had yeah. to be rescued by the Coast Guard. Why? Why was it flooded? Was you know, what, what, what my guess is tide flooding? came in. The tide came in, and this person wasn't prepared for how quickly the tide came in. Wow, that's pretty. It just seems like it's pretty. You know, tide. Uh, and sometimes it comes in a lot faster than you think. And like, it's, I mean, if they had never been there before, and they just looked at it like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's totally dry now. Yeah, I mean, there should maybe there should be some signs in yeah. the area saying uh, caution, high tide area. Absolutely. Possible, possible drowning. Because no that, photographers. That shit scares me. Like I've, I've gone out into like, you know, <laughs> places where like, you know, Oh, I'm, what is going to change here? Uh, the, oh, yeah. any place where I'm like, you have to like where there's, you know, that there's maybe some potential danger. Um, like we would go when 
Uh, I've been to like Scotland and stuff and it's just like, oh, this is safe. But for how long is it going to be safe? I don't live here and I have no idea what might happen. So, yeah. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's fun being risky, but at the same time, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to your surroundings. Yeah. And like you said, I think the scariest part about that is like, you know, it within 15 minutes, like that all changed. Yeah. Like it's, it, stuff happens quickly. And I, and I actually had, uh, there were several stories like that that people had submitted. Um, I'm actually saving for other episodes, <laughs> but like, uh, there was like water coming up on people really quickly. Like, people in a river and just like thinking like, Oh, you know, I can stand on this little like Island and I can, I'll be able to walk back to the riverbank. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, like five minutes and all I can't, like I I'm just basically standing on the one place in this little, you know, outcropping in the middle of a river. It's uh, yes. Yeah. Nice. Water is very, that like, water yeah. is probably the one that scares me the most. Oh, I, I, I agree. I'm not much, um, I love the ocean, but I'm not much good as far as swimming in the ocean. Yeah. All right, next story. I was exploring an abandoned power plant by myself, and I was on the phone with my girlfriend. I hear metal clanking and start hearing voices, and she kept talking, and I was like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. I turn her corner and look down, and there's a what appears to be a freshly dead crow it looks like it's been stomped repeatedly <laughs> on the floor. Oh, no. That's not funny. But I'm there was no blood. Stuff. There was no blood. Yeah. And it's just horribly disfigured. Uh, you know what to say? The place has been abandoned for over 150 years at this point. And now I believe, and I guess it's... I'm sorry, I can't like, make sense of like it's no longer a power plant. A power plant that was banned for 150 years. Uh, I don't know yeah, I don't know what you're talking like abandoned. Oh, maybe I think, I think 15 I think it was years. Probably there for 15 years, 15 years okay. and I believe oh, yeah, makes- no one's gone in it in more than 10. And I'd say it's probably okay. no longer safe to go into. Sorry, I think they had added an extra zero there. That was my first really dangerous outing, and it gave me a very unique adrenaline rush. I think I described it to people I knew as a quote unquote fear boner a childish name but that's most honestly what it felt like your heart rate skyrockets knowing that you could fall hundreds of feet to your death at any second yeah i i understand that feeling a fear boner (laughs) i'm gonna have to use that one from now on yeah it's a description (laughs) of like it's the adrenaline rush the adrenaline rush of uh i'm I'm gonna use that one i'm gonna use that one more often than not now it's like 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 my girlfriend, hey, could you go turn off that light that's upstairs? Well, it's dark, <laughs> but I want to get a fear boner, so I'm going to go up there. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway because I like the fear boner. <laughs> uh, all right, next one. I was doing a photography project based on horror and fear, which mainly consisted of staging creepy photos such as you know, a clown coming out of my sister's closet, stop motion of dolls moving around or photoshopping people's portraits into nightmare inducing scenarios. So anyway, I needed to do video for, you know, extra credit. So I scouted out a location as part of my research and chose some woods near my house or near my town because I thought woods are quote unquote, stereotypically scary. Like, you know, Blair witch stuff. I couldn't drive. So I walked there after school, probably about 45 minutes. That's not a short walk. What I didn't think about was that the sun sets pretty quickly in November when I was doing this and not long after I arrived, it was going to get really dark really quick Yeah. to make matters worse. A thick fog rolled in and I'm talking thick. (laughs) Couldn't see more than a few feet in front of me. I had no torch. So this person is maybe in Europe somewhere living in the middle ages. (laughs) Uh, no reflective gear. And the only way home was along the winding road that I had come down. I didn't fancy my chances against the blind traffic. So I waited for three hours until my mom could come and pick me up. This was, (laughs) this was before smartphones or at least before I had one. All I had was my camera and an iPod nano. That really sets the time period. (laughs) iPod nano. Um, I had to sit alone in the dark on the edge of the woods, not being able to see anything 
but very much being able to hear everything. Creatures moving, trees creaking, twigs snapping. It was all very intense for a very long period of time. I couldn't decide oh, I if it was better or worse to sit facing the woods or to keep my back to them. <laughs> Get back to the woods. Uh, just to add to the terror, <laughs> the field next to the woods was home to huge northern cattle. Okay, this person is in England. Um, not sure the exact breed, but they're like the big hairy looking bulls. Hairy cows, I call them. I did yeah. not know this at the time. I did not know this at the time. But I could hear heavy footsteps and even heavier breathing coming through the fog. I started graphing myself at this point. Then through the fog, this bull-looking creature's face appears and stares me down for a good five minutes before disappearing. Now that is like, all right, I'm jumping out of the story. <laughs> that would be an awesome photo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's where you need to be taking a picture. The photos that I took weren't very scary, but, but the experience itself was terrifying towards the end of it. I sort of overcame my fear and it was, I got to a peaceful Zen like space, but I would never do that again. Again, this is not a matter of anything paranormal or like supposedly paranormal. It's just like, yeah, that's like sitting in absolute darkness in like fog and just being very aware of things moving around you for a long period of time and not being able to get well, away from it. And it was just putting yourself into risky situations that you yeah. shouldn't have been in. Yeah. Like you really should have prepared more for that. Like there's, like, yeah, well, this person sounds like they were young and they weren't really thinking that far ahead. They yeah. Just, I'm like, oh, I want to go out and do this thing. Yeah. Well, they're like in high school. I'm, 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 I'm going to go out to the woods by myself in November. Uh, and you know, not pay attention to the, the time of year. Yeah, but I mean, luckily, they were able to get in touch with their 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 mother. Yeah, somehow. Not sure how, but like, you know, three or figured out like this is. I well, said this is where this well, is where this I'm was, going. This was the the age of the iPod Nano. So, so what would that be like? Ninety something, two thousand, mm, like two thousand something, two thousand something. The iPod Nano. Uh, that's the, is that the, is that the, is that the mini? That's the, that's the, a very not the shuffle, not a shuffle. Yeah, the shuffle is like the square one. Nano had a screen. It's, it's yeah. yeah, it's gotta be, uh, come on. They had a, they had a, a flip in 2017. Phone. When was it introduced? They had a flip phone. They were, they were able to get in touch with their mother with a flip phone. Introduced in 2005. So, or one of those things, you know, yeah, flip, they had flip phones back then. They weren't, they weren't smartphones, but you know, they were able to get put to their, their rescuer. But still, like, wait, wait a minute, why were they sitting out in the woods for three hours? Were they that far away from their home? Uh, it was like, like he said, it was a 45 minute walk back. It was a pretty long walk, but also because of the fog. It had no, like, flashlight well, and no, like, well, reflector they, gear. And he walked on the road when the sun was out. Like walk next to the road, he's afraid of like getting hit by a car because of the fog. I see. That's what he was afraid right. of. Like, yeah, that you know, if he tried, like it's a windy road, and if he's walking and he's not able to see very well, and then somebody comes around a corner and runs him over. I see. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they got out of there safely. Yeah, luckily for them. Mm, who knows what what that cow would have done if they'd stuck around. <laughs> yeah cows cows can be pretty scary yeah uh especially in the dark uh all right next story this again another animal related one for my photos i hike a long distance and pitch an open tent so that i can get the morning light i'm based in new zealand so our forests don't have anything super dangerous that can hurt you for the most part besides a couple of species of spiders Unlike neighboring Australia, where everything will try to kill you. Um, on one such hike in an unconserved land, I pitched my hoochie. Well, first of all, uh, what a great, what a great saying. I pitched my hoochie in between a few trees. As it got darker, I tried to fall asleep. Around midnight, I heard a growl next to me. Yeah. It sounded, in my mind, like a panther. 
there have been cases of a mysterious wild panther in New Zealand, and they have been spotted on several occasions over the years. I thought, oh my, I've come across one. I grab my head torch, <laughs> headlamp. Yeah. This person at least is prepared enough to have lights and turn the light on in the pitch black. Suddenly, I see 40 pairs of eyes looking at me through the darkness. One of the pairs of eyes is on top of my sleeping bag, right by my feet. Whoa. What is it? It's a bunch of possums. Oh. (laughs) Cool. I like possums. Throughout the night, the possums were growling and fighting each other. Yeah. And they it's, sound I know, much I know bigger exactly than they what are. That was, okay. They yeah. sound much bigger than they are. But you know, yeah, that happened uh, just just a few months ago to me to me uh, here in Tennessee because there's possums in Tennessee. I was, I was hanging out with some friends in the backyard by a bonfire, and we were, uh, you know, drinking and having a good time. And I heard that sound coming from the woods on the other side of this creek that he lived near. And we went to investigate, and of course, I was the one to, to climb over the fence and go down into the creek where I shine the flashlight and I saw these two possums that were in full on, uh, you know, MMA fight mode, uh, you know, fight mode. And I, I poked them with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I poked them so that they would stop fighting. But yeah, they are man, really noisy. But I can yeah. imagine like being out in the woods here and that be like, Holy crap. What is I, remember, this? I remember on a, a trip to central America, um, Caroline and I were on a uh, tour of some like Mayan ruins and this guy who was obviously like hunter dude was like gotten a deer out here and the lady who was running the tour was like no we do not have deer we have what do you uh, the howler monkey and wild boar and how do you say la pantera and I was like, uh, Panthers, <laughs> you got Panthers out here. I noticed there are no fences around the area that we're in. And uh, she's like, yes, you know, many people think they're black, but they are actually spotted. If you look very closely, you can see the spots. I'm like, I won't be looking very closely. Mr. Deer Hunter over here <laughs> can look very yeah. closely if we have to come ac- happen to come across uh, La Pantera. Um, but speaking of animal noises, uh, that I heard that absolutely frightened me. Um, have you ever heard foxes mating? What mating? Foxes. Frogs? Foxes. Oh, foxes. Uh, probably. Maybe. I, I mean, maybe not. Like, they sound like someone being murdered, like a human being uh, screaming. Yeah, I, I no, I have not heard that, nor have I heard a bunny being uh, murdered either. Yeah. Apparently that's, that's kind of yeah, it's, I, I had a rabbit growing up that like fell and broke its leg, and like this, that like sound like honestly is terrifying um it, it's i it, it mean not in the same way that the f- foxes foxes mating sounds like a human being screaming <laughs> and the yeah. first time i heard it and i was like I, I was like oh my god like someone's being killed like a person is being like brutally murdered and somebody else, else was like now that's just foxes having sex. Yeah, it's not nearly the same thing. Yeah, I was like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's that's just uh, foxes. Don't worry about well, it." Well, it, <laughs> it would be really unfortunate for the person who who was getting murdered, and they just <laughs> happened to be in the forest with foxes being ma- mating, and they're like, "I'm trying to get help here." Somebody <laughs> help me! And the foxes please. are screwing everything up. What? <laughs> it's like you're walking through New York City, and it's like. Hear that screaming? Someone's getting murdered? No, that's just foxes mating. No, that's just a like, fox mating in <laughs> Central Park. It's carrying all the exactly. way here to Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, I'll have to look at YouTube that one. I'll have to YouTube that one. Oh, it's, it's I mean, when you, you when you like listen, then you can kind of hear like, oh yeah, that doesn't sound like a person. Um, like doesn't quite, maybe, I don't know. All right. But moving on to the next story. And I think that you may have actually, this is another place you might have familiarity with. Not scary, but just creepy. Back around 2014, I was er- into urbex, urban exploration. There was an abandoned yeah. mental asylum in New Jersey that I had heard stories about. Hmm. 
So without better Which judgment, one was it? So without better judgment, we'll get to that. Without better judgment, I decided to explore it solo around the late evening, expecting to get out while it was still light out. I was able to get in easily enough through the broken basement window, and I made my way through the oh, yeah. maze of corridors and vacant rooms looking for things to photograph. I know what's wonderful. I yeah. do too. Most of the rooms were pretty creepy to begin with. Metal mattresses with restraints on them, chairs bolted to the floor. Then I found the room that said OT. And weirdly enough, the red light outside the door was glowing. It was pretty dark inside, but I did see some light. So I made my way in. And it had the musty smell of old chemicals in the air. But in the corner, there was what looked like a spotlight and an operation table with what looked like a human torso on it, covered halfway up by a sheet. It took me a few <laughs> seconds, but I realized it was just a CPR dummy placed in a way that would scare people who were you know, exploring the hospital. My general rule is that if I see stuff like this, I should make my way out ASAP, just out of fear that there might be some person in there looking to scare me or actually hurt me, uh, who might not be a very good mood since I, uh, you know, I stumbled upon their space. My heart was definitely racing at this point, but in that panic, I forgot where I was. All the while, it was getting darker and darker outside, so there was a lot less light streaming through the dusty windows. Then I found this long hallway, and all the doors on either side are locked, and there's an exit sign glowing faintly red all the way at the end. I I pretty much ran to it and tried the door, but it was chained from the outside. Again, I have to retrace my steps and run around like a mad person, uh, no pun intended, trying to find my way out. I find more doors that are chained from the other side. And what really got to me is I was running, my steps echoing, and it seemed like there was someone behind me. And I know that's what it was. It was the sound of my own footsteps which is why when you stop and like the footsteps following you stop behind you. My heart's still racing as I found my way out through the same w- window that I had climbed in through. I got in my car and I looked back at the building now shown in stark contrast with the sun almost setting behind it. And I could see no less than five flashlights moving around inside. <laughs> yeah. Not sure if those were other explorers security people or who they were, but I was not waiting around to find out. Suffice to say, I did not go on very many explorations after that one. Yeah, that's a, well, what Overbrook? Overbrook. Yeah. I've never been to Overbrook, but you know, case in point, like I said, like, like I said before, you don't go by yourself and, um, and, and yes. Well, and also when you're, when you're an explorer and you're, and you're in a building like that, and you're running around with a flashlight, kind of a dumb thing to do because people can see you from the outside. Absolutely. Well, yeah. That being said, <laughs> that being said, it, it might have been one of those. I think Overbrook might have been one of those ones that was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't too many just security guards. Mm-hmm. Lots of kids went there to party. No, so. Overbrook is like it is definitely where people went to party, but it also is not in the middle of nowhere. It's actually right near where I live right now. Uh, it's in like a town over from me, <laughs> and oh, okay. I. I mentioned to this guy, like it, it's in uh, it's in a town, it's Verona, Cedar Grove, um, New Jersey. And I, it's funny because I met somebody at the dog park who used to like party there. And she was like, oh, that place is like, it's crazy. It's, you know, like, I think it's haunted. Like, it, it, like that, I also heard uh, like a lot of stories about, I didn't put it together until afterwards. Um, I was listening to. Uh, dollop which is i don't know if you're familiar with that podcast um where they were talking about the guy who sort of popularized uh lobotomies as treatment uh was there and there were a lot of unnecessary lobotomies that were performed in that hospital Uh, oh yeah yeah so there's a lot of like you're thinking about Probably a place if there if there is a location that is probably haunted, that would probably be one of them as people who were like I mean just the experiments this guy did on people, like mm-hmm. all th- thinking that he was just like m- paving the way for you know like these people who just needed to be you know sedated in some way, and he's like, oh, you know 
hysterical women who, you know, having the, just, you know, we're going to lobotomize them. Look how much, you know, more subservient they are now. Um, just a lot of crazy, unnecessary things that this guy did. And so when you think about it, if there was a place that was haunted, that would probably be, you know, one of them, right? Like a lot of people who died horribly or were mistreated. Um, so what do you think happened to Overbrook Asylum? Um, what do I think? What happened at, at, the, at the Overbrook Asylum? Yes. Like what, what, what has happened to the campus of Overbrook Asylum? You know, I, I, that's the one. I, it's funny because I, I never visited that one. Of all the places that I went to New Jersey, I didn't go to Overbrook for whatever reason. It was, I'm not quite sure why. It was still up when I moved to New Jersey. It was still mm-hmm. there. And it looked creepy as hell, like driving by it. And I had said to Caroline, like, you know, I should come out here maybe and like take some pictures. Um, but you couldn't really get in. Like I like went and looked. And it was like it was really secured at that point because um, it looked like the buildings were like falling apart. They tore it all down. And they've built condos on top of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, there was a really good one. And um, there was a really good one. Greystone State Hospital. Yeah. That. We used to get in into a window. That was uh, was that Middletown, Middletown, I think. Yeah, um, that was a really fun one to get into. Um, but yeah, Walter Freeman, the, the lobotomist, he, he toured around all those asylums, and he had good intentions. That guy, you know. Yeah, but, but still, <laughs> That's, but uh... of all the places, you know, I've, I've I've been to so many of those places, and like I said before, it's like I've always wanted to see a ghost. And I was always open to, to, to the possibility, but I just, I never really, never, never really saw one. Now, my thought on I had that, lots of, but, my thought on that is like, if there's going to be a place that's haunted, that would probably be it. And now you've like totally set yourself up for a, you know, like, uh, not, poltergeist situation, like <laughs> just building a condo upon condo. It's like a sprawling, like complex of condos, like, yeah, on top of this. You know, display, like, do they tell people <laughs> like, yeah, oh, yeah, this was uh, the site of, a uh, you know, asylum where we <laughs> unnecessarily lobotomized a whole bunch of people. So if you are. Well, there's a famous there, there's, there's a famous one in Massachusetts, um, Danvers, the Danvers State Hospital, or the first one that got me into it through that movie Session 9, if you've ever seen Session yeah. 9, yep. which um, that one, they just removed the guts of the building and kept the facade and turned it into condos. And so everybody is aware of the history of it. And it still more or less looks like it did on the outside. Um, and I've always wanted to go visit it. I've had friends that have gone to visit it as condos and taken pictures of it. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 like I said, I'm very skeptical about things like that. I, I don't discount people's experiences, but um, I think, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I, from what I've heard, the, the, the current uh, Danvers State Hospital slash uh, condos, they haven't, there's no case of haunting or any weird things going on there. So, no, but I, you know, but then there's the, the, Buff, the Buffalo State Hospital too in, in Buffalo, New York. They turned that one, the administration and a couple of the wards on each side, they turned that into a, a really boutique hotel, which was doing really good. And I was happy for them because they restored the whole thing. But since COVID, they had to shut down. But that's another one where it's like, oh man, I would totally love to go to spend the night in there because I, I had spent the night in there in one of the wards before they restored it for the hotel. So it's like now that we can go in there and actually rent a room for the night, that's just pretty awesome. But yeah, the same thing. I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's haunted. Yeah. I mean, I went I to a, a hotel in New Orleans once and they handed us the keys and the keys were like, like everybody had like different sort of keys. And, uh-huh. Like to each room, and I was like, "What's up with that?" And like the clerk was just like, oh, "Let's confuse the ghosts." And it was just like it was like a completely <laughs> a throwaway. Yeah. Like this is just something like whatever. Like it was. It wasn't like I'm giving you the spooky thing. It was just like no, it's just to confuse the ghosts. And I was like, "Yeah, okay, all right." <laughs> and, oh, but you know, like, it becomes it becomes it becomes a way to sell tickets. I don't, to, as a folklore, makes it to make things a little more interesting. Yeah, but I don't like. She didn't like say it in such a way like, oh, like, blah blah blah. Like, oh, it's just confused the ghost. She was just like, she was looking at her stuff and just like said it like, and unless you asked, 
Like they didn't bring, like nobody was bringing it up. I was just like, what's the deal with like the keys? And she was like, oh yeah. Like, but that was also a thing. Like there's a Gillette mansion up in Connecticut, which uh, yeah. was built by, have you ever been there? It was built by William Gillette, the first guy to play um, Sherlock Holmes. Not, yeah. Not been there. He built this castle and it's really just kind of amazing. Um, he, he had built like a little steam train that went from the river up to the top of the mountain where like the, the castle is. There were like secret uh-huh. passages so that he could either get out of the house like when people showed up that he didn't want to talk to, or he could show up behind them on the stairs and surprise them out in front of his house. <laughs> he could just like pop out behind them. Nice. He had mirrors set nice. up so that he could see people in every room. Like if the door was open, he could see into the rooms. And, yeah. Um, he had puzzle locks on every door. Wow. Instead of keys, which supposedly was because he didn't want ghosts getting into like getting into the rooms. Yeah. So I'm not sure how we handle the situation. Did you have a contract? Well, I had one I found for free online, but my lawyer says it might not hold up. Next time, you should head over to nerdyphotographer.com. They've got a selection of contract templates for weddings, events, portrait sessions, and even for hiring second photographers and associate photographers, which would certainly have helped you in your current situation. Really? I will check that out. Nerdyphotographer.com? Yep, nerdyphotographer.com. They've got all sorts of contracts and agreements that can help make sure to protect you and your clients. So what are you going to do? Well, we just have to wait and see what happens, I guess. So no pants on? Who know anything below the waist. Totally porky pig in it. Impressive. Not really. It was pretty cold out. Yeah. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. And now for my favorite part of the show. What's that say? Useless information. Ugh. This is always death. All right. So our useless information for this episode, before modern psychoanalysis and medications, doctors weren't sure how to treat mentally ill patients and often restrained them in jacket-like garments with overlong, stri- overlong sleeves. The straight jacket. The establishment of asylums gained momentum in the early 1800s, and along with them, the use of the straitjacket. Do you know what some of the reasons given by actual doctors for using a straitjacket on patients were in those times? Any thoughts? Uh, do I know what straitjackets were used for on patients? Yeah, like what some of the, the, the symptoms or whatever for warranting the use of a straitjacket. Oh, schizophrenia, like like any kind of violent behavior. Mostly, they oh. need to keep, they keep them restrained from, you know, masturbation. Uh, here Chronic are, masturbation. <laughs> Three prominent reasons were religious excitement. Oh, yeah. Sunstroke. Uh-huh. And reading novels. <laughs> reading novels. And this is, they would restrain people who had sunstroke. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Or we've come a long way. Reading too many books, reading too many books. Yeah, we you, you can't, we gotta, we gotta put that person in a straight jacket so they can't hold a book and read it. That makes, that makes sense. I, I personally am more of a fan of the chronic masturbation yeah. theory, yeah. but yeah, that's just me. <laughs> Jeremy, thank you very much for coming on. It was a pleasure <laughs> talking to you again. You're welcome. It was great. Take it easy. Have to man. come back again. Yes, definitely. Definitely. All right. Talk- all right, talk to you soon. Later, man. Welcome back. While you were gone, it appears that Rula has been possessed. Eh, ghost in the machine, I guess. Many thanks to Jeremy Harris for joining us again on the podcast. You can see more of Jeremy's work at jeremyharris.com, as well as on Instagram at Jeremy Harris Photographs. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends about the podcast. Spread the word. 
The Nerdy Photographer is an independent podcast. That means I don't have a team of people producing these episodes or handling the marketing or the social media. It's all me. So your support is greatly appreciated. Whether that's telling total strangers about the podcast, leaving a review so that other people might find us online, or following at The Nerdy Photo on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, or, you know, buying me a drink, which you can do through the support page on our website, nerdyphotographer.com. Okay, I think that wraps it up for this episode. Uh, now I have to find a robot exorcist. If you have any leads on something like that, hit me up on social media. Until next time, stay safe and stay nerdy. Listen.